and just plain voted no for politics. And the same is true on supporting uh, a lot of other stuff, like our veterans. We tried for years to get President Obama to support us on reforms to demand accountability at the VA. But when did that get political? Veterans don't know political party. They've served their country. And they're Democrat veterans and Republican veterans. And what we all want is that their earned right to get quality health care and be taken care of by the VA is undiminished, unvarnished, untarnished by bad administrative judgment. But we never got very far with President Obama, but under President Trump, we passed a bill, signed into law his first year in office, that allows us to claw back the pay of people who mangle records, cheat on the system, and don't give high quality service to our veterans. It allows us to claw <laughs> back their bonuses that they earn for customer service, like up in Minneapolis, where the person got a six figure bonus and she cheated the system said she was serving veterans at a great rate. Answer, no she didn't. She just docked the record so it looked like she did. We passed a bill that President Trump signed into law that put the Corps of Engineers in charge of overseeing VA construction so that we don't have goofy stuff like we had out here at, at uh, McClellan. But the real reason is that they're the only federal agency, I didn't know this uh, governor until I got elected, that supervises their own construction. Boy, was that a mistake in Aurora, Colorado. $300 million hospital, and it sounds like a lot of money, but that new Baptist facility I drive by all the time in Conway, that they opened, that was $100 million to build that building you drive by on I-40. So, you know, $300 million for a hospital, that sounds reasonable. How about the VA facility at Aurora is $1.1 billion over budget? So it's $1.4 billion. Who took responsibility for that? So President Trump agreed with the Congress, put the, anything over $100 million has to be overseen by the Corps of Engineers, be competitively bid, have regular meetings. And I've been a personal witness to this kind of stuff. When I dealt with the solar panel, debacle over at McClellan when I was first elected. They never had a construction meeting. The first thing a business person does if they're gonna add on to a building or is have a construction meeting every Monday at noon. We're gonna talk about how we're doing. Are we on budget? Are we on time? Are we using the right materials? Are they doing a good job? Never had a meeting. And as a result, that company went bankrupt spent $8 million on solar panels that didn't work for four years, paid a $1.5 million fine uh, to kind of clean it up and get it repaired and finally hooked up to energy. Never bothered to talk to energy about how to hook it up. And that company that went bankrupt stuck the federal government for $80 million across the country, putting in solar panels as part of the stimulus money from 2010, Obama stimulus. So accountability is something that I ran on, and that's something that I'm proud to vote for, and the first place to do it is on behalf of our veterans. So we got a faster growing economy. We've uh, cut taxes on our families. Instead of seven out of 10 Arkansans being able to take the standard deduction, nine out of 10 Arkansas families will be able to take that standard deduction. Double the child tax credit for our families. And then I thought it was great uh, to, uh, let people use our 529 plans to pay for K-12 education if they want to send their kids to a religious school. And uh, as the governor will report to you, it was hard to get through the legislature. And my opponent, who I anticipate being my opponent, was happy to vote present on that bill like he does about three quarters of the time on anything that's important. He can't make up his mind to vote yes or vote no, and he was a present vote on 529 plans, which had to mirror the federal law and the tax bill to help families. So bottom line is, I've really enjoyed uh, my three years in Congress. I've enjoyed working on economic policy. I've enjoyed fighting for veterans and better service for our veterans, both as a representative here, 
where I've got three wounded warriors and all we do is handle veterans cases. Tom McNabb, David Carnahan, and Richard Maxwell do a great job helping our veterans in this district. We work on it all day today uh, for them. And I get, I'm so proud of that. I mean, it's $5 million approximately in the last three years we've gotten for veterans through my office, through those three guys. That's how hard uh, they're working. But there's more to be done, and I want to conclude, just take questions in just a minute. There's no questions? All right, well, I'll just say on foreign policy, I think Donald Trump has changed the whole dynamic in American foreign policy, in North Asia and in Europe. And when I travel, it's absolutely, people are thanking us for being re-engaged. That's not what you'll read on cable television or see in the news anywhere. But I promise you, people are saying, thanks for what the President's done for NATO finance, thanks for engaging the Middle East, thanks for trying to solve the problem and mess created by Obama and Syria, thanks for getting North Korea to, to uh, shape up. And so I want you to pray for that outcome. That's what I want you to be thinking about the next 60 days. Let's pray for a great outcome through the President's leadership in North Korea. Thanks for supporting me. I need your support this fall. I need Saline County big to beat the progressives of Hillcrest. Thank you very much. you won't leave without French, French, French. <laughs> Before you leave, I, we do have a check for you from the Swain County Republican Committee. So I'm here all night. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Governor, we don't have one for you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you for coming. Okay, the last speaker on our agenda is the Chief Counsel for the Arkansas Department of Human Services. He is a candidate for the Arkansas Supreme Court, and he's someone uh, well known in Sling County. Let's give a warm welcome to David Sterling. Thank you guys so much for having me tonight. Um, I am David Sterling. I'm running for the Arkansas Supreme Court. It's a position that's currently held by Courtney Goodson. Uh, you may remember she ran for Chief Justice two years ago, and after she lost that race, she had to go back and finish out her term as Associate Justice, so I'm hoping to replace her later this year, and with your help, I can do that. Uh, I'm a lifelong Arkansan. I grew up in Petrocana on the right side of the state line, the Arkansas side, and uh, moved to Little Rock about 30 years ago to go to college. Um, uh, grew up, uh, my dad was a carpenter, my mom was a nurse, and they taught me the value of hard work and perseverance. Um, my dad worked really long hours and weekends trying to put food on the table. My mom put herself through nursing school as an adult to try to help make ends meet. And they really taught me the value of uh, hard work and just really put my nose to the grindstone. And so when I moved off to college, uh, to Little Rock, uh, put myself through, made my way through undergraduate, uh, put myself through graduate school, I have a master's in public administration, and I put myself through law school. Um, and uh, uh, I guess uh, 28 years ago, uh, met my wife, and uh, Dee, who's not here tonight, she's actually uh, down in Hot Springs. Uh, the governor talked about how great Su Susan is uh, for him, but my wife has been amazing on this campaign trail. She's down in Hot Springs, uh, uh, meeting with the Garvey County uh, Republican Committee tonight, and uh, she's been all over the state. Uh, it's been a very abbreviated campaign, only three months. So we been able to kind of fan out throughout the state and everything. She's been a great help, but uh, really appreciate that. We met 28 years ago, and uh, been married now for 26 years, and have a 15-year-old daughter. You guys have one of my push cards on your table there. You can see my family on that, and read a little more about me and my candidacy. But, um, you know, uh, three years ago, uh, I've been practicing law now for about 20 years. Uh, three years ago, the governor asked me to be chief counsel of the Arkansas Department of Human Services, which is our state's largest agency. Uh, we've got 7,500 employees, an $8.2 billion budget, and I personally supervise 75 attorneys and a staff of 172 people all over the state. And there are attorneys that are really fighting for the most vulnerable citizens in our state. I mean, DHS takes care of children and adults, uh, people with disabilities, uh, people with mental illness, uh, the elderly and the poor, and truly this uh, job has been uh, very humbling to me over the last uh, three years, and it's been an honor to, to serve in public service. So three years ago, I set aside my private practice, uh, doing mostly business and commercial litigation, and entered the realm of public service, and I'm asking you 
for your vote to help me continue that public service on the Arkansas Supreme Court. I ran as a candidate in a statewide race uh, four years ago, and it was a long 18 month campaign. I traveled the state, probably made the lap around the state four or five, six times. Uh, met a lot of you guys here uh, during that time. Met a lot of people I really know and admire and have, come, have become lifelong friends. And uh, I've talked to the people of Arkansas uh, over the last uh, five years. And, and uh, this has been a very abbreviated campaign. Like I said, it's only lasted about three months. Uh, but I've been able to make my way around the state again and talk to people. And what I hear consistently from people is, as far as what they're looking for in their public servants and the people they elect to public office are people that share their values, people that are going to serve with honor and integrity, and people who bring the right experience to the job. And I can tell you, as far as values on the Supreme Court, people are looking for people that are uh, judges that understand that there are three separate branches of government. And the judges should not legislate from the bench. And uh, people uh, want judges who understand the concept of, of uh, judicial restraint and understand constitutionalism and originalism and textualism, concepts that uh, we've seen uh, voiced by Antonin Scalia and more recently Neil Gorsuch. And that's the kind of uh, judicial philosophy I'm trying to bring to the Arkansas Supreme Court, add my voice to that. As far as uh, uh, experience, I've worked in a very small law firm, I've worked in a very large law firm, and I've worked in my own law firm over the last 20 years. And more recently, I've worked in, you know, as chief counsel of the state's largest law firm, uh, public law firm. We've got uh, a few more attorneys than what the AG's office does, and the staff is slightly larger than that. So um, I bring the right experience. And as far as integrity, uh, you know, I, my faith informs all my daily decisions. And I promise, if elected, to serve you with honor and integrity on the Arkansas Supreme Court. With that, I'm asking for your vote. I will say that uh, one really important uh, aspect of this is, I don't think this is a problem with you guys, but a lot of people skip the primary and just decide to actually vote in November. I mean, statistics bear that out. <clears throat> but in this case, for your judges and prosecutors and all the nonpartisan races, um, it, it is actually our general election. So it, it makes it all be over with. And on May 22nd. So I'm asking you for your vote, asking you to make sure you get to the polls, and, uh, and ask you to vote for me. I really do appreciate that. Thank you so much. Well, we want to thank everyone for attending this evening. Um, I might note that I put at some of the tables anyway a uh, filing form for those that might have an interest in joining us. It costs you $50 for two years, and you get to come to these meetings uh, if you want. And we actually um, oversee a budget. Uh, this year we'll be probably putting almost $20,000 into various races, um, helping out candidates. Um, and we meet monthly and have usually good, good speakers and uh, give you a chance to make a difference in Arkansas and in Saline County and hopefully recruiting and electing good conservative people to represent us both at the courthouse, state house, and also up in Washington. Um, our next meeting is scheduled for June 25th. That's a constitutionally required meeting. We have to certify our nominees for the November uh, ballot, but we may have a special meeting uh, prior to that to talk somewhat about budget meeting, budget matters and what have you. I will note that um, Brad Hooten, who is chairman of the Election Commission, is moving out of state. Fortunately, he's going to stay with us through the May primary, uh, but he will be moving sometime this summer. So the, the county committee will be electing either a special meeting in June or at the June 25th meeting, a new election commissioner for Saline County. So that's pretty important. If anyone's interested in running for that position, uh, see me and I'll explain the details as to what's, what's involved in being an election commissioner. There's only three and you run the elections in the state of Arkansas during election day. Actually, the early voting, Doug, is done run by the county clerk, is that correct? Yes. So early voting, which starts next Monday. Monday, this coming Monday. So just a reminder to everyone here, uh, you can start voting early, come Monday, and vote often, right? Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't supposed to say that. That's why we got voter ID. You get, you only get to vote once. <laughs>
<laughs> then you can vote again in November. Okay, if there's nothing else, I want to thank everyone again for coming. We are adjourned. Thank you.